Hello everyone, this is Heidi with Downtown NorCal Live and today joining me is Chris Wink of Wink Accountancy Corporation. Welcome Wink. Oh, pardon me, welcome Chris. <laughs> Thank you. I have to apologize for that. My our best the best man in our wedding, his name was Wink. So I'm <laughs> used to saying hi Wink. Anyway, so <laughs> no you are an essential business and you're we're talking from your office today. How does it feel to be April 14th and there's not a big rush. Um, it's a huge difference, honestly. Um, the, the the whole month of April, um, actually, pretty much since the middle of, of March, when uh, the city of Davis told us to, to shelter in place, and, and we pretty much closed the lobby at that point. Um, uh, you know, we were still working uh, quite a bit, uh, still a lot of overtime and all that. But um, and at that point. The IRS hadn't even pushed back uh, the filing deadlines, uh, so we were still uh, going crazy. But now uh, it, it's it's much different. Um, it, 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 there's still people that want to file; they still want their refunds, etc. And, and we want to help them out. Um, and there are businesses that are still uh, going strong, so uh, we need to still help them. And there's just not nearly the sense of urgency um, because people, a lot of people realize they have until July. And, and so uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's kind of sad to say, but it's a much nicer tax season <laughs> than normal. <laughs> well, that's okay. There can be some silver linings here. So can you just, for folks who aren't quite aware yet, what are the basic changes to the dead, deadlines for taxes? Right. So the biggest thing is, is anything that is due, and that's filings or payments that are due between April 15th and July 15th have all now been pushed back all the way to July 15th. So that's anything for 2019 that might be due as well as 2020 for estimated tax payments and so forth. Anything in that window has all been pushed back. Uh, to July 15th, and that is the major uh, thing. There are some other minor things like uh, even if you wanted to do a, an IRA contribution or an HSA contribution, you still have until July 15th because that would, it theoretically would have been due on April 15th. So there's other things that they've pushed as well. Um, uh, and, and generally speaking, they're being very lenient with this. So uh, if anything happens to be due, um, in in that window, uh, you can pretty much rest assured that even if they haven't specifically said something, they'll probably pre be uh, pretty lenient with the pushback on it. So that does give us a July deadline, but there is worry that this will go on for a little while. And I, when I talk to small businesses, that is the worry they are experiencing, that every month that goes by without income is another month behind on all of their bills. So a lot of them are asking me questions about, you know, potentially rating their children's college funds or retirement planning. What do you recommend in that regard? Or is there any kind of uh, discussion around perhaps relaxing the penalties that might, one might incur if those funds need to be accessed? Yes. Uh, so at, at this point, I would, I would still try and look at retirement accounts, college accounts, etc as a last resort mm -hmm. um and so if at all possible uh, uh try everything else um uh, especially the the programs etc that the government is is handing out um to uh, to get money to survive um but if you have to then you have to uh, and as far as um uh, getting into 401ks and iras they uh, there has been uh, some uh, legislation and up to about a hundred thousand dollars without there being any penalty to do so. Um, I don't know of the uh, specific um, uh, procedures in order to get to that just yet. Um, there, it, things are still changing day by day, um, and, it, and and like you said, as far as we know, uh, it's July fifteenth. That could even be moved. Uh, so. It, it, we don't expect a whole lot of other legislation to come up, but you never know. Uh, and interpretations and, and explanations, etc., come day by day. Um, now, as far as uh, um, uh, the the government program.
programs go, um, small businesses uh, can apply for two um, uh, program loans with the SBA, and you can look uh, at, at sba.gov uh, for those. One is the uh, EIDL, uh, which is, uh, we'll, we'll call it the, the COVID-19 relief, uh, emergency relief fund uh, kind of loan. You can get an advance of up to ten thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars per employee, um, and, and uh, that um, is a loan to keep the business alive. And then you also have the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, which is an SBA loan. Uh, you, you generally will have to apply with an SBA lender, um, but uh, there is a form at the at SBA.gov that um, that allows you to begin that application um, and. You can search around for lenders. You can only have one loan, but you can search around for lenders. Usually, you want to go with the bank that, that you bank with, right. uh, and usually they're SBA lenders. Um, but the larger the bank, um, the more you're just a number. Uh, and so, you know, you can look around and, and see. Um, you, you can file as many times as you want, and as soon as you get a loan, you can then withdraw mm-hmm. from uh, from other banks. Um that's interesting. Are, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are the two main ones from the SBA. And then, of course, um, they've really beefed up a lot of unemployment. Uh, and mm-hmm. this is, it's not necessarily that you've lost your job. Even if you've been furloughed or your hours have been cut, you can still apply for, for unemployment. And interestingly enough, self employed people uh, can apply for unemployment now uh, for this crisis. So um, there are some possibilities out there. Um, before getting into retirement accounts, and, and, and I would suggest trying to go through all those um, before doing the last resorts. The self-employment issue you brought up, I've talked to a number of those folks, and they are having a very hard time navigating the system. Do you have any advice for them? Uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the Paycheck Protection Program and the EIDL from the SBA also covers on uh, self-employed people. So, um, yeah, it, unfortunately, with with self-employed, uh, and I mean, I consider myself self-employed. I mean, I have a corporation, but you know, it's, it's my corporation. I'm basically self-employed, um, and uh, you, you're pretty much trying to, um, you know, shake all the trees just to see what falls. Uh, as far as uh, jobs or, or work or any of that kind of a thing. Um, and especially for small businesses, uh, things like the, the, the bars that have, have closed, uh, that kind of thing, um, we don't know exactly when everything's going to open up again. Um, and so any, any business, self-employed or otherwise, I would just suggest uh, trying to um, uh, go to the SBA uh, go to the EDD, uh, which is for unemployment. Uh, go anywhere that that you you can just to see um, what is available to you. And uh, and as far as it, it, there could be as well, your your bank could be uh, willing to work with you, and not even uh, on an SBA type policy or a type program, but um, through a, a regular line of credit or something like that. Um, so it, it's uh, I, I think a lot of the the government, as well as uh, um, a lot of the other industries, they're, they're willing to help out. Um, uh, you know, we, we could have closed our doors and said, you know what, we're done, we're staying home. But we didn't want to do that because we know that there are a lot of people that lost their jobs. They need their refunds, and we want to be here to help them file their tax returns so they can get their refunds. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of businesses out there that are willing to help those um, that have been shut down. So uh, you mentioned a lot of aid and this, of course, I think, you know, we're right in the crisis, so it's hard to look ahead. But if we need to look ahead at some point, I mean, we will. Um, when when does the bill come due for all of the aid? What should we be planning for for taxes in future years? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of school of thought on that one. Um, some people, and I, I really think it, it depends on, how the economy comes out of this. Um, it, are we going to go back to a the norm, the normal that we've always known, or is this going to be a new normal? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, because if, if there are a lot of 
dooms uh, doomsayers uh, that, that think that the markets are going to get even worse. Uh, everything's just going to going to crash, etc. Um, and uh, I mean, I could see the reasoning for that. Others uh, say that well, once we come out, especially when there's a vaccine. Um, that the, the, it might be slow to get the wheels turning again, but we'll be back at full speed plus, um, and it's going to come back in a hurry. So um, there's, you know, you'd have to have a crystal ball in order to really figure it out. But um, I, and I think that as far as paying the bill is really going to depend on how we do uh, coming out of this. And uh, generally speaking. Um, we're, we're one example is very small, but as everybody goes on unemployment, all of the employers, at least in California, all their rates, even if they didn't have anybody that, um, in their staff that went out on unemployment, all of the unemployment rates are going to rise. So mm-hmm. payroll taxes are going to rise and for some people. That's not going to be much, but for others, it'll be a, a ton. Um, and, that's just the way that uh, California works it. And so we will be seeing uh, increases in our unemployment rates and unemployment payments <clears throat> into the EDD. Um, and so as an example there, there will be other things that will go up. Will income taxes go up? Will, will corporate taxes go up? That remains to be seen. Um, it's possible, certainly possible. Uh, and there's also the possibility that inflation could be a hyperinflation uh, issue, um, especially if they're just printing a lot of dollars to get out in circulation. Yeah. Uh, so sooner or later, we will have to pay the bill for this um, and how we do that, whether we go to $30 trillion in debt or taxes rise or combination of all the above. Um, yeah. So you reminded us you are a small business, as are most accountancy firms. Um, how has this impacted you? Are you, are you having to, uh, is it, has it reduced your revenues? Are you shortening staff hours? What are the, uh, can you hear me, Chris? Uh, yeah, you cut off for just oh, a second there. I was asking how this has impacted your business. Are you um, seeing a reduction in your income and how are you responding? Right. <clears throat> essential business um, and the type of business that I am, it, it hasn't, it, 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 there, there's, it, there is a difference. Um, uh, my billings aren't quite the same, but I, I think that's really because if you give people until July to file, you're mm-hmm. basically giving the procrastinators more time to procrastinate. So to me, it's not as much that I'm losing business. It's a timing issue. Mm-hmm. So those, my clients will come in. It'll be a couple of months from now, but they'll still come in. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and as far as my type of business goes, um, the vast majority of my business uh, will come in, in in February and March, which we didn't have to stop seeing clients in, until the middle of March. So we were still working every day since January 1 and, and working a lot of overtime. Um, but the interesting thing that really has changed is um, that we've had to go to uh, uh, phone or Zoom or, or you know, that kind of, yeah. of uh, appointment. Um, and, and some people basically said, you know what, I still want to see you in person, so I can wait a couple of months, uh, hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll book an appointment when you can open up your lobby again. Um, others uh, want to do the, the video thing, um, and we've always had a lot of people that email or, or, or fax or use Box or Dropbox or, or drop off or that kind of a thing, um, but it's interesting how it feels a little more impersonal um, when I'm not seeing clients every hour on the hour. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's really uh, the difference for me. Okay. Um, is there anything you would suggest people think about that they might not be right now? Um, I, I, I would say try and get as much information um, from as many different sources 
as is possible. Because, uh, you know, number one, you can't just trust everything on the Internet. But number <laughs> two, um, there will be things that I read that say masks don't help. And other things I say or that I read say uh, that masks, uh, you know, help something. It's not going to completely prevent it, but it helps. So uh, you have to do your own analysis. But I, I think uh, getting information about what's going on, about the virus, about the economy, about about whatever, um, get as much information as possible and, and not just one source. That's, that's, good advice. that's my advice. point. That's good advice. Anything you'd like to say to your state leaders? Um, generally, uh, you know, good job. Um, we, it, it, this is an enormous task, mm -hmm. and there is no right answer. For as much as we don't want people um, to, to get infected and to die, we have the economy to think about. Um, and the longer that we stay in the lockdown, the worse off the economy gets. And, and, and so we, we don't want to pit lives against dollars or anything like that. But it's really hard to extricate health and the economy. They really go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, thank, I want to thank the leaders for um, stepping up and doing something. Even if it's not the right thing to do, at least they're trying. Right. That's uh, so, um, and it's hard to know exactly when to come out of this. Yeah. Uh, and so we've been hearing today that California, Oregon, and Washington are going to try and uh, reopen, etc. So, um, you know, I at least they're trying. That's yeah. Thank you. That's well, why. That's what I think. I certainly thank you and your leadership for staying open so that people can continue to access their refunds. And I know sure. that many other accountancy firms are doing the same. We've I'm, been... I'm sorry, you cut up there at the last. Oh, I said I was, I'm aware that other accountant firms are also doing the same. So thank you for that leadership. Um, we've been talking with Chris Wink of Wink Accountancy Corporation. And Wink, I'm so, or, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Our, our fabulous best man. Anyway, <laughs> Chris, it's been so nice to talk to you. Uh, this So tomorrow, I hope you join me. I'll be having uh, the editor of the Davis Enterprise, Sebastian Anate, on. And uh, please join me for more interviews each day at Downtown NorCal Live. Thank you.